Lord's Day devotion for June the 11th, 2023. It is the first day of the week. This is Sunday. I'm going to give you a real brief um, devotion this time. I know the last one ran for about a half an hour. I didn't intend that, but I was moved by the Holy Spirit. Pray that you watch that and bless it. So this will be about five, ten minute devotion. Um, let, let's begin with prayer, and then we're going to go to uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 25. Heavenly Father God, you are great and glorious in every way, the Creator, the only true God. Heavenly Father, your love is the greatest thing that exists because you are love, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God, for all your great and perfect character traits. You are the originator of them all. Glory and praise to you forevermore. Heavenly Father, thank you personally for touching our hearts. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for saving us by Christ Jesus, your only begotten Son, according to the good news of salvation and the free gift of everlasting life. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for giving us your Holy Spirit as a deposit, not only guaranteeing our, our everlasting life, but also, Father God, empowering us, counseling us, comforting us, teaching us the truth, and reminding us of the truth. And Jesus is the truth. Heavenly Father God, bless this devotion, bless our week. Pray, Father God, that we get off to a good start. Bring all these things to your remembrance in the name, to our remembrance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, Galatians, let's get right to it. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 25. Turn there if you would like to, or um, look it up on your cell phone. Pause. Feel free to pause this video at any time. Okay, now... Um, in this particular uh, letter, Galatians, uh, Paul is writing a letter to uh, Gal Galatia and the, and the church in, Gal in Galatia, known as uh, the Galatians. They um, received the word of God very eagerly, and um, they had uh, um, a great joy in the Lord. They were known for their joy. Um, they they were very religious and, and very devout. And, and um, but but they were growing Christians. They were young Christians. They had issues. They did have issues because they were relatively new in the faith, and 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 some of them unfortunately were trying trying to in, incorporate the the law of God given through Moses and live very legalistically. Okay, so what the Apostle Paul is is doing in this letter is in encouraging them to remember their faith that we're saved by faith first of all and that we are living by the Spirit. Yes, the law has its purpose, and uh, it's still relevant today to teach us and, and, and instruct us, but we're not saved by the law. We can't be saved by the law, in fact. Um, it, it's Somewhere it's written actually in the law of God given through Moses that if anyone breaks one law, they are guilty of breaking the whole covenant, all the law. Okay, because it, it, it's an entire covenant. Okay, and now we're under the covenant of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the new covenant, praise God, even though uh, we're not judged by the law, we have these instructions in the law to encourage us, to be examples, to to change us and, and convict us of sin if we do sin. Now keep in mind, Jesus Christ is Lord and, and we live by the Spirit as we uh, cover this passage of Scripture. Okay, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 25, and then I'll close us out in prayer. Okay, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires, and if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Now let's break this down real quick, one by one. Love, of course, is the greatest thing. Uh, the Bible says that God is love. And joy, it begins with the joy of salvation. We're talking about joy, these, these characteristics by the Holy Spirit, not, you know, um, brought about by, our, by human effort, by our own will or by our you know, our own uh, thinking and philosophy and so forth and so on. We're talking about things 
that are instilled in us by the Holy Spirit here. Not the world's version of it, but God's version of these things. Keep this in mind. So we have love, and then we have joy. It begins with the joy of salvation, but it also co- includes the, the joy of having godly thoughts, beautiful thoughts, wonderful thoughts, uh, the, the joy of victory over circumstances, and so forth and so on. Peace. Peace is pretty self-explanatory. Jesus Christ is called the Prince of Peace for good reason. And that word prince uh, actually means principality or, or a ruler um, with the king, okay, in, in the context of the Bible and the context in which the Bible was written. So let the Prince of Peace rule in your heart today. If you have any troubles, pray, pray on it and take it to God immediately and let the peace of God come over you as you thank God for all he's done and you appreciate God's greatness. And then this peace of God comes over you. Patience. Patience in, in the, in the um, King James Version and the New King James Versions, it, it's actually written as long-suffering, which is very interesting. Uh, some uh, versions of the Bible call it um, patient endurance and things along these lines. When we think of patience, think of uh, constant patience, ongoing patience, uh, patience with no end. That's what this word in the original language actually means patience okay kindness now that's very self-explanatory in a very cruel world that's very selfish and demanding and very high demands these days people want you to be perfect they want you to be uh do, you know uh loyal to them in the in they're very unforgiving and uh very quick <laughs> very very quick to be negative and so forth and so on none of these things are kind it's kind to actually be to be pure in heart and to be uh, gentle in nature and and to to be affectionate toward people. This is what we're talking about when we mean kindness. Goodness, goodness is the opposite of badness. Okay, this isn't a scale like, you know, uh, poor, satisfactory, good, excellent, like on some test in school or something like this. This is literally goodness, the opposite of badness, okay? Faithfulness. Now, faithful, God is faithful by nature, okay? Because he's pure, perfect, he's pure, he's eternally holy. Of course, he's going to be faithful to his promises. He's going to be faithful to his word, particularly written in the Bible. And he's faithful to his word in us, okay? So look at faithfulness in, in this context. Now, as we come in line with the word of God and live by the Spirit, we also are faithful with God. Okay, gentleness. Gentleness is very self-explanatory, but th- this is this is something that comes from everything else in our relationship with God. All the other fruits of the Holy Spirit and everything that's going on with the transformation of the Word and the Spirit in us brings about gentleness. Now there is a time to not be gentle, like if there's an emergency or something something comes up and you can't be gentle. You've got to be firm and you you've got to be strong and aggressive to save somebody's life. You know, like. Uh, performing CPR or whatever the case might be. Uh, run, you know, if you're a fireman, a uh, fire person, a firewoman, you run into a burning building. Okay, you're not exactly being gentle. Okay, but by nature we are gentle by the Holy Spirit. Self-control. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, self-control. That that's talking about not being moved by circumstances. Uh, not especially what's going on uh, on in the circumstances of your heart. Um, uh, the changes that are going on in your, in your life, uh, hormone changes, even dietary changes. Uh, you're, you're tired at times. At times, other times, you're alert, and you might, you know, drink a cup or two of coffee, and you're very alert. But you got to have self control because you know, you know, you don't want to be too exuberant and and you know, turn people off. So self control. There's a bit of self awareness there. Against such, there is no law. Now. Now, there are other aspects of the Holy Spirit that aren't listed here, such as holiness. Um, There are other aspects of the divine nature by the Holy Spirit, such as musical ability, math ability, sense of humor, um, and so forth. There are other things that aren't listed here, but here are the key things that we need on a daily basis and consistently all the time. Those kinds of things are listed here. Now, let's jump down Uh, To the next verse, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. 
Okay, so th- th- this sounds like a, a, a one-time deal and then forget about it, but it's not. Th- this, is a, this is a coming to Jesus moment and you're saved. And then from, uh, from then on, the Holy Spirit causes you to be reminded that you put the flesh away. You know, it's talking about the sinful nature in regard to the flesh, okay? Y- y- the Holy Spirit will bring it to remembrance. That's the context of this, of, of you know, with the, with the other verses of this passage, okay? Now, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. That's the last verse, and I'll close us out in prayer after a comment on that, okay? If we live by the Spirit... Let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Notice the if is conditional. Okay, in order to keep in step with the Spirit, you have to live by the Spirit. All right? So that means, you know, doing the things that we talk about in this daily devotion. Okay, these examples that I give you of devotion here. Lord's Day devotion. Um, Diligent in prayer. Diligent to seek the Word in the Bible. Diligent to to seek God in prayer about his word when the Bible, you don't have access to the Bible. Say you're, you're commuting or you run into a situ- situation at school or work or with friends or neighbors or whatever. And, and you pray, you just pray a real quick, urgent prayer under changing circumstances. Lord, help give me the scripture that I need um, in your word to help me in this circumstance, that kind of thing. Okay. This is all part of living by the spirit because God will bring these things to remembrance and teach us all things. God promised that through his son, Christ Jesus. So let's live this week by the spirit, live it. Don't just go through it and endure it. Really live it and, and stay in step with the Holy spirit. Be blessed Draw closer to God, and he will draw closer to you. Let's close this out in prayer. Heavenly Father God, thank you that you've not only saved us, but you've also been with us and will continue to be with us forevermore by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for a week that will be devoted to you. Thank you, God, for devotion every day. Thank you, God, that you remind us to... Uh, set aside time for you. I pray that you bless our devotion, bless our due diligence that we put in every day. Pray, Father God, that all the fruits of the Holy Spirit this week be magnified in us as we glorify you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Be blessed. Have a great week. Until the next time, goodbye and God bless you.